I went for ordination training in 2005 to 7. I was at Wycliffe Hall in Oxford. And there were a lot of people who were into church planting, had church planted, were going to. So I think there was something in the atmosphere or the culture at that time which left an impression. I didn't know that was going to happen, but I ended up at Aldrich Parish Church, which is 10 miles north of Birmingham, more or less, um, and enjoyed my curacy there. Um, it was a good time. It's one of the larger churches in, in this diocese. Um, at that time, I think there was about 400 people on the Sunday. So a relatively large congregation in a relatively mixed, but relatively well-to-do area. Um, and coming to the end of my curacy, I spent some time with Patella Britain, a Christian community that helps people with addiction problems. And that had been part of my curacy as well and part of my training too. So um, there was an awareness um, which had grown not just in me but in others of what the issues were with addiction and, and how God can get stuck in and sorted out. So that was part of the background as well. And we also began to talk about church planting. Would it be possible for some of us to go somewhere and do this? Uh, and I spoke to a number of people, um, friends really. Um, is this something you would consider doing? Is, can we pray about this? Is this something you would want to try out? What do you think? Um, we kind of let that bubble away for a few months more than that. Um, and slowly the answer came back, yeah, yeah, we think we can do that. So we began to explore where to go and you need a bishop to help you find where to go. And um, I remember speaking to the Bishop of Aston in Birmingham Diocese and he came up with a few places and we visited them. But they were just too far away, it didn't feel right. It was, it was further than the comfort zone would be for people coming from Aldridge. So uh, at one stage we thought it's, it's just not going to happen, we can't find the right place. But then once we talk, started talking with um, the Archdeacon of Walsall about um, St Peter's, um, suddenly lights began to come on that oh yeah my my grandma used to live there or i grew up on that street and uh, i know such and such a person and such and such a place or i used to work there so all the lights began slowly coming on to say actually this might be where god is leading us we got going with the consent of the local congregation here we got going in 2013 christmas 2013 and brought a team of about 30 40 people including the kids from Aldridge to join the congregation here. Aldridge is about four miles from here, so it's not very far at all. Um, I was hoping that a lot of people would move into the area. I did, um, and initially most people didn't, and to be honest, still most people haven't. But a lot of people came with enthusiasm and skill and vision and hope and did enough to help the church here get going again. It was on its last legs. You can get into real trouble talking about church plants and, uh, and I've been in trouble with some people. We can't call it a church plant because there was already a church there. Um, I think church plant is a, just a generic name for helping something to grow which wasn't growing before, uh, something new. So it can be a graft or it can be a... a, a yeah, there's lots of gardening terms which I don't get at all. Um, but the idea is to make something new grow and uh, something new did need to grow here at St Peter's because there'd been a faithful congregation that just got older and the congregation had shrunk gradually uh, in a way that a lot of places have. In 2012 there were maybe 20, 25 people on a Sunday morning, most of whom were 70s or 80s. Um, very few children, there wasn't much real children's work going on anymore. Uh, and they'd got to the point where they've, you know, there've been people here who've spent their whole church lives, their Christian lives, working and serving here, with the best will in the world, just not able to do all the dynamic stuff that uh, people 50, 60 years younger would be able and willing to do. But they kept the church doors open. They kept worshiping um, in a very traditional way, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. But that they, they were able to keep doing that, and they kept praying. Um, we didn't realize just how much before we came they had been praying but that became evident later on that there had been a lot of prayer going on so they were wondering what to do um, people had given heavy hints well there's, there's not much future here you have to get ready for the doors closing and, and all this kind of thing and one or two of them dug the heels and, and said not so sure they didn't know what was going to happen but they were praying and expecting uh, and we had no idea that, that was going on. 
one of the better things we did, I think, looking back, was to do a survey. Uh, I think it was at harvest time, so we called it Surveying the Harvest. And you said, what was it you really liked about St. Peter's in the past? What were your favorite things about it? Um, what do you enjoy most right now about St. Peter's and what would you like to change? Um, and that gave people, that, that kind of respected what had gone before and allowed people to say what they really liked and, and to say what they valued with what was left at that point and also to talk about hopes and dreams and vision. And, th and that actually that survey was the point at which the church, as it was here, gave consent for something new to happen. You know, they took stock of where they'd been and what they'd come from, what was happening now and what they wanted to happen again or for the first time and were able to say so. So um, that was the point at which I think the church actually formally and prayerfully gave its consent to a, a team coming in uh, and that took time. I came in as interim minister, it was half time interim minister initially for six months. So it was a very temporary start, but that was just to test the water. So that gave me a chance to know some of the people here and to learn a bit about the local community and vice versa. So the people already here could work out whether this guy was worth trusting with all these strange ideas about bringing teams in. Um, the church opened in 1841. Every church is a church plant and this was planted from scratch, from seed or whatever you want to say. In the 70s there was a visit from a Bible college in Birmingham, I'm not sure which one. Um, but a, a team came and there was a real spiritual outpouring of sorts, which seems to have profoundly affected quite a few people here. Um, when I was doing a, well, just talking about spiritual gifts, one or two people said, oh yeah, we speak in tongues. Yeah. Really, you speak in tongues? How did that happen? And this story of the impact that the, the Bible college visit had made, or what that had opened them up to. Um, meant there was a, a spiritual route which we didn't get and we were kind of grafting into that if you like when we came we didn't know that was going to happen but that's that's the way it turned out I'm looking at one of the old um, assessment forms a few weeks ago that the vicar at the time had said, said this was a, um, a charismatic church which surprised me because when we arrived and what was left um, five or six years ago was a, a very traditional, uh, old-style place. So, um, but there, there's something of the roots still there. People have been praying, and there've been some real spiritual dynamic, good dynamic, mixed in with everything else that went wrong. When we first started, Christmas 2013, it was half and half. Pretty obviously, it was half the, the Sunday morning congregation were people that had been here for a long time, and half had come in. And that's gradually changed and I think it's still half and half but one half is people who've arrived since one way or another and the other half is made up of the previous two halves if you like um, so on Sunday mornings at least there used to be a, an Asian congregation worshipping here as well but on Sunday mornings it used to be 25 say on a Sunday last year the average was 70 um, including lots of kids it's not all about the numbers but every number is an important human being so we're, we're pleased at that we want twice, three times that number. We want to send people out to other churches, you know, just to share the good news. Uh, but that's, I guess, one of the most obvious signs. And if you count the number of people who are connected, recognisably part of St. Peter's, the family, there's 130 or there were last year. Um, so the church has really come alive again in terms of engagement and, and reaching out to more people. The biggest thing that happened since we planted really was um, getting an Eden team. We always envisage some sort of community involvement, some um, missional work, if you want to use the jargon for it, where people in the community love and serve the community and help people come to faith and to church that way. There was a lot of praying. Um, and Gavin Gem arrived two and a half years ago uh, and pretty quickly began making a major difference. So. They've just got to know people on their local streets. They've got to know the kids especially. They've done detached youth work in the local park. They've run lots of events um, in church buildings and had people in their homes. And um, just got, got to know people. Uh, but from that, that opens the door into, well, we have church on our Sunday. We're connected to that church. See that church over there, that's what we're part of. 
and um, that's opened the way for people to come in. And that figure of 70 people on a Sunday morning, 71, whatever it is, uh, uh, actually a very large proportion of that is people under the age of 16. Um, and for a church this size, to get as many as 15 to 25, sometimes even more kids on the Sunday and have that proportion of the Sunday morning congregation 16 or under and engaged is, is actually quite something but that that's why Gavin Jem's work is so important the reaching out to young people right now they are the church right here and now as well as thinking about how's the church gonna keep going in the future we need leaders to come out of these people that we're getting to know now they're going to be the ones who are also going to be there in the future too so it's really exciting to see that, especially at the time when you hear so often, oh, there's no people in, no young people in church anymore, no children. Um, it's not, as they say, rocket science. You, you, Gavin Jem have shown that is you, you love them and, and serve them where they are. And, and you know, God does the rest, he does the growing. We've kept a con connection with Battelle Britain. Battelle Britain is part of, um, it's actually worldwide, um, just a network of Christian communities that take in people with severe drug and alcohol um, addictions. Um, it was part of why we, we planted the St Peter's. A lot of us were familiar with that work. Um, and there is a need in this area for hope in the whole realm of addiction. Um, there is, there's a hostel down the road where men especially who've reached pretty much bottom, rock bottom, uh, end up. Um, and there are lots of other people around who are struggling with this. So to have um, a church in the community where these issues are understood, I think it's been very important. And we've, we've kept a connection with Battelle. So once every week on a Wednesday evening, we have a Battelle style worship service and a drop in and people are able to come in and meet people from Battelle who have struggled with addiction and are now in Battelle or have been in there for a number of years, hear their story, um, discover that it is possible to change and it is possible to become who you're meant to be. We've loved seeing people go there and their lives changing, just as we've loved seeing that in church too. So that's been a really important part of serving and loving this community, We're actually reaching in and being able to deal with some of the real issues that are on the doorstep, literally, many days of the week. One of the first things we did was to, we got growth fund help, Diocese of Litchfield growth fund help, to buy a new AV system and with, with the screens that you might be able to see behind me, and a new sound system, which was much needed. Um, and of course, we came in thinking, well, that, that means we can do modern worship music and that'll be great. But what also happened was that it changed the way we do our old style worship as well. So on Wednesday mornings, we said we would always keep a, a traditional style service with hymns and prayer books. We'd, we'd do that for the existing congregation as long as they wanted it. So Wednesday worship takes place every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Um, but actually getting the new sound system in has meant we can play not just hymns on an organ, but lots of other beautiful music as well, which really fits in with the ethos of that. Uh, and I wish that little group really loves we can do old-fashioned music, if you want to put it that way, or different types of music using the new technology which wouldn't have been here otherwise. So um, we've actually been able to enhance traditional worship as well as what you might have expected, the, the contemporary worship. We're very much still working towards self-sufficiency, so in the very early stages we were subsidised by the church commissioners, for which we'll always be grateful. Um, but the goal always was to become a, a self-sustaining local church. Um, the share system takes account of where we are and it, you know, the understanding is that people who live in this parish and or near this parish just haven't got the same resources as people elsewhere. So that's taken into account. Um, I say we're about two thirds, maybe three quarters of the way there. Um, this is one reason why we need a mixed congregation. We need people with a bit more money and uh, other gifts to give alongside the people who are already here with less money but other things to give. So we need everybody. Um, and there, there, there may be a case for sharing um, in a different way, maybe a, a link back to other planting churches, in, in, at least in different situations. Um, other churches may be able to carry on supporting financially in other ways to enable this to happen. And I think that would be a, a good way forward, that you don't lose a link completely when you plant from somewhere, but you retain some sort of link which will include people and will, may include finance and, 
uh, and what have you as part of doing the Christian life together. We're not isolated, or we shouldn't be. Yeah, church plants come in lots of shapes and sizes and the revitalization sort of church plant that we've been involved in actually thinks that the buildings can be a real asset and a, and a real blessing to, to the work because it's already a landmark within a local community with varying degrees of trust and engagement. Um, and this, this building certainly is a landmark within our parish. It's probably the most um, beautiful building that there is in the parish uh, and it's, it's had a long history. So yeah, the building for us is important. But of course, it comes with all kinds of overheads. We need the money to install a really good heating system and make the place more comfortable. It has been tried in the past, in this little area of the back of church. Um, a few decades ago, there was enough enthusiasm to make the, make the building a bit more accommodating and welcoming. But we need to go a lot further. We need to make it a flexible space again, where we can worship God first and foremost, and also do lots of other activities, whether it's alpha courses or kids groups and, and youth groups and community stuff. The church hall is there as well. It was built in the 70s, it has a flat roof, it leaks, it gets broken into with monotonous regularity. That needs replacing really. If we were to revamp this church building, maybe we could do something completely new. We could build a social enterprise center or social housing or a new community hall. Um, if we had more time and resources and well, hopefully we'll get around to that eventually. We'd rather do it sooner than later, but there's so much that could be done with the right resources and the right input, and um, we hope to get around to that.